somebody made the comment that, you know, hey, they're working on their contact lens strategy. And I chuckled and said, well, I think we all have a strategy and some of them are good and some of them suck. But there's a strategy because you're doing something on a repeated basis every day. Right. And so if, if, uh, if you want to build a better strategy and a better mousetrap, how do you do that? So, and it sounds like you you started finding that with just getting rid of the stuff you don't want to use, right? Well, and it was I I struggled with it a little bit internally because I didn't I don't want to guide her into saying like only fit Alcon and, and Cooper, right? I, I believe that we can make everybody happy within that portfolio, but it's like I don't know. Slowly but surely, I just kind of got over it and started throwing away one set after the other, and like I don't know. Yeah. Well, Save just staff time too. They don't have oh. to stock them. They don't have to like. Oh. It's one less thing. So you don't have to stock them. You don't have to in- inventory them. Um, you can always get them. You can always order mm-hmm. them. Every distributor, the, right. the companies will send you trials if you if you need mm-hmm. it. The um, yeah, we struggled with that too, and uh, I've, we we finally put our foot down and said, hey, this is as a practice. This is our strategy, mm-hmm. which I think is important. Um, and we didn't do it just for contacts. We did it for. Everything. Here's how we manage our our dry eye. Here's our glaucoma management mm-hmm. strategy. Now you can deviate from it if if necessary, but this is the game plan, and that's the game plan unless otherwise, you know, uh, you're told otherwise or, or the situation dictates otherwise. And honestly, that has helped so much because staff know how to answer questions. They know what we're going to do with the patient. They know how we're going to how we're going to treat them. They know the follow up schedule. Um, when it comes to contacts, they can tell you what our number one, number two, and number three lens for every single patient is going to be. Which you know, when the front desk starts selling it for you and, and teeing the patient up for success before I even see him, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So, and yeah, not having the fit sets because I don't know how uh, big your offices are, but mine's not not big enough to have uh, everything from every company in Southern California. Uh, the your Belinda one is kind of obnoxious with regards to how much storage we have. So we could like easily oh, nice have cool. all of them in my exam room, and the exam room is still massive. Oh wow! Um, yeah, so it's eventually there will be a remodel, and that will be turned into two exam rooms because it is too big. Cool. Um, but, Extra exam rooms are uh, are huge. Um, I'm curious, how much uh, do you involve your? Um, your staff in the contact lens process, uh, you know, do they do your INRs? Do they do any sort of the, uh, the, the fitting or the troubleshooting with them? No. So that's been something I've been wanting to integrate a bit more. Like I have a, well, so they do INR. Yeah. So they train for sure. Okay. Um, they don't do any slit lamp, any over refraction. They'll, they'll train, get the lenses on them, take VAs, do all that fun stuff. Um, take whatever scans I need and all that. But uh, now that we can have opticians refract, mm-hmm. I'm just looking that at that as almost like a, I don't know, multifocal IR. You're, you're doing the Alcon multifocal, right? Yep. Both eyes open is plus a quarter, better, same, worse, better, same, worse, better, yep. same. And just being able to like put that on as a thing onto crystal and have my staff do that part for me. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's basically it. Like you're done after that or I don't know. Uh, I've yeah. been thinking about the idea of I have one staff member kind of earmarked that I'm like you could do this. And I think you might, she likes doing all the special testing stuff. And so I, I oh, then she would love it. it. It would be an easy way to be like, Alyssa, I'd love to pay you more. This is how I could pay you more. Like do this for us. And that would be great. Yeah. Um, so, so if, you, if you'll humor me, we, we, found ourselves in the same boat. Um, and actually my challenge was I was worried that my staff was getting too good for what we could provide them at the, the opportunities we could give them at the office. And so I, I was looking for more professional development opportunities for them. So a while back, um, found the NCLE had no idea it even existed up until I oh. started looking mm-hmm. right. National contact lens, uh, certification. We all focus on ABO for opticians, but right. there's an yeah. NCLE accreditation for, for, um, for technicians, uh, trained her up on that. We said, hey, as soon as you pass the test, here's your, your salary increase because now you're mm-hmm. worth more. Um, to the practice, you're more valuable. You can you can engage more. Uh, I don't know as if I've fit a soft contact lens in the last three to five years. Um, she's done, done most of the work um, because we do the refraction. So she's working off of mm-hmm. my refraction. She's working off of, of my slit lamp. Um, and, and the contacts are so good that 
it, right. there's very yeah. few troubleshootings that you need. Mm-hmm. Um, and even the troubleshootings, her success rate, especially on the multifocals, is actually better than mine. Because right. as a doctor, I thought I was smarter than the, the fit guide that the companies mm-hmm. produce. Um, she followed them because she follows rules right. better than I do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and patients loved it because they didn't care who they worked with and they were happy to see yeah. her. It was more flexible. Um, she loves it. We've got a, a couple other techs who are, are working on getting their NCLDs now too. And we're starting to train them up to work on, you know, how to fit, uh, help fit the GP lenses, the ortho K lenses. Um, you know, my sight lenses just because I'm overseeing the process, but I, I don't think I have to do everything. Right. Yeah. How did you present that to patients? You just say like, Hey, this is our contact lens fitter. She's going to take care of you. Yeah. You know, what's funny is that, um, we were more scared that of patients reaction Mm -hmm. than patients were. And what I've learned is that as long as we're confident in what we, we present, Mm -hmm. they accept it. I have never had a patient asked to see my diploma or my license or anything. It's up. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's behind the, the front desk. I, mm-hmm. I can't, I can't see it unless I walk up and look at it, but nobody does. They just, they trust because we present ourselves as such and, uh-huh. and they're trusting. So it, when Kristen started, uh, started doing the contact lens work, I just said, hey, here's what's going to happen. You know, Hey, I'm really excited for the, uh, you know, for the, 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 the review multifocal, um, you know, Kristen's going to, I'm going to pass you over to Kristen's hand. She's going to finish the exam. I, I stole that phrase from one of our meetings. She, you know, she's going to finish the exam. So I use that phrase when I hand it off to the opticians as well. That way it, it doesn't feel like I'm turning it into a sales pitch. It feels like it's, it's still part of the process, but Hey, Kristen's going to finish the exam. If she has any challenges, uh, she'll come grab me, but, uh, you're in, you're in fast, fantastic hands. And then I leave. So it's not an option. I just, here's what's going to, here's what we're yeah. going to do. And then I leave. And, um, in the minute, do you Kristen get the lens on there or anything? Nope, I don't touch it. Okay. No, it's, uh, I mean, she's, she's, uh, um, fully capable of, of looking at it. If it's a new wear, I'll take a look at mm-hmm. it under the slit lamp. You know, I'll stick my head back in for two seconds. And, and mostly that's mm-hmm. just to cheer them on, uh, because it's, if it's a new, a new wear, they're going to be having challenges with, with INR and handling a lens. So mm-hmm. I want to make that positive. If it's a new multifocal wear, uh, we know that they're going to put them on the first time and it's not going to be this glorious experience mm-hmm. that they're expecting because there's a little bit of a trade-off. Um, so I, I come in mostly as the cheerleader, but if they've been in the uh, wearing contacts before and we're just changing powers mm-hmm. or designs or whatnot, no, it's, we know they work. And, um, and, and, you know, Kristen grabs me if there's a problem, but she's, she now troubleshoots on the follow-ups. Um, I, I, I don't see a reason why I need to, to be in there when she's, fully, fully capable of it. Uh, she engages with the reps. She learns the new technology. She's, mm-hmm. she's incredibly uh, invested and involved. And our contact lens business has done significantly better. The more we, we, we delegate it to, you know, other professionals within the practice. Does she check patients out? Yeah. So she'll okay. finish the process. Um, yeah, we try to I check think, everybody. Oh, go ahead. Uh, sorry. I was going to say, I think if I checked out everybody, more people would get annual supplies. So and we so thought about that too. Being in it and then being like, oh yeah, yeah, no, this is what's best. I was just working with you. Like I was essentially your doctor there for a second. So you mm-hmm. should yeah. trust me. This is what you need to do. I, like, I don't know. Interesting. That That's how it worked for us. When mm-hmm. it's um, trying to figure out how to put this, we, we found that when they're, when it's just a job, you're going to get, whatever you're going to get out of it. Right. Mm -hmm. For me, if I have to even just do just the job, I'm only going to put in that level of effort. If I now become engaged in it, Mm -hmm. it's going to be significantly higher. If I'm going to a man from San Diego. So if I go to a Houston Astros game, if I'm out in Texas, I'm going to go cheer, uh, cheer on the home team. We'll be good, but I'm, I'm not engaged. Right. I'm not, Uh I'm not part of it. When I go to a San Diego Padre game, I got a Jersey. Mm -hmm. I got the hat. I mean, it's, right. it's, it's different experience. And so I think getting Kristen and, and now our other techs involved in that contact lens, uh, being a part of it, they're more engaged. It's that, that mm. go into the game, you know, I'm part of this deal. Yeah. And so there our, our sales have gone up too, because it's no longer a sale. It's just a continuation mm-hmm. of the treatment. Yeah. Makes sense. And then they're, yeah, I don't know. I've thought about that with, I think I've, 
seen lectures and heard people talk about how they have maybe two scribe tech opticians mm -hmm. that just rotate with them and they sit through the whole exam and they're sitting there when the patient goes, Oh man, that's so much clearer. Yeah. And for the whole conversation, they get to walk out and be like, yeah, remember, remember when you were like jaw hit the floor, you're, you're saying it wasn't that much better. You don't want to get, okay. Huh? Cause I really seem like it was better in there. So why don't you want to do that? Like, yeah. it's, it's, it, it, we, we, we've seen the numbers go up. Um, we've also done a little bit less on trying to push the initial annual supply and done a lot more with CLX. Uh, and subscription and, and through the focus on contact lens. We actually track now just our uh, material revenue uh, per contact lens exam as opposed to annual supply sales um, because it was hard to figure out if somebody bought half a year and then came back and bought a half a year. You know, how do I go back and oh, apply gotcha. it to them? So I'd, so instead of looking huh. at, at, um, at one-time shot, you know, initial annual supply sales, which we do track, but now our overall number metric that we follow is contact lens revenue, per contact lens exam. And so that, that not only is affected by how many boxes they buy, but also what we put them in. Oh, so, they're like, we like our numbers and our spreadsheets. That's the nerd. In yeah. <laughs> yeah. We just, we just started doing that with everybody in the practice, like last week. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'll be interested. And then my, my office manager in the Yorba office will, vision source office she's going to be our our local like bsr admin cool. or whatever yep so i'm i'm really excited for that like oh, she's going out to houston next week oh, she's gonna be in houston next week yeah. yeah i'll see her out there so we have a uh, uh once a year we bring all of the vision source administrators um and all of the the, the vision source representative or vsr facilitators uh, uh -huh. staff uh, counterpart to the administrators out to to houston to have a, a multiple day meeting so we've got yeah. a couple hundred people in there. It'll be it'll be great. What's her name? Uh, Z. It's it's Zell Medrano, but it's okay. just Z E E. So she Z? goes by. Oh, so, awesome! Yeah, that's easy to remember. I'll uh, uh, I'll look for her and say hi and uh, make sure awesome. she's uh, she's welcome and, and engaged. That's a, that's a fantastic meeting. It's nonstop. She'll come back. Yeah. with a lot of notes. Yeah, that's what, and she's she's that person. She's systems oh. based. She's she's gonna be, I like. Yeah, I'm very excited that this was one of those after a meeting conversations I had with Tony. It's like, do you know, or do you have anybody that would be, I, was, I have someone who would be great. She'll be great. Like just, and then we had meeting. One of the SLO reps was there and she had interacted with a Z and then she w went to pull me aside afterwards to be like, Hey, you know, you should think about having her join this program. And I was like, Oh, that's already dialed up. Like her and Tammy are already in, in sync Perfect. and like everything. So it just was, yeah, I'm excited. So. Oh, I'm stoked hearing that uh, you're working with all the starting with all the metrics with your team and then having uh, Z be involved at that level. Uh, I, mm -hmm. Your practice is going to skyrocket. It's going to so. be fun to watch. Well, I don't know if I ever told you, like, so this practice was dying, like on the verge of closing the doors sort of thing. The owners had lost money on it the past couple of years, went from it was never a big practice, went from 480 a year. Well, that peaked there in 20. 18 and or 2017 or 2018 and then it was down to 319 in 2019 and then 2020 and like the six months that i had it we did like 280 and i was like okay, okay cool <laughs> nice so we're we're up like 50 percent from what i bought so it's still just 450 but it's uh I mean, we're about to have our best month ever. So that's huge. That works. Yeah. Better yeah. than December so far. So hopefully well, good. we can keep that trend. Ah, very cool. Well, in the, uh, what, it, it, I've got lots of different mentors cause I, I try never to be the, uh, the smartest person in the room. Um, right. Yeah. Not that I ever think that about myself. I, I came out wrong, but I, I try to surround myself with people that just kill it at what they do. Right. And I remember yeah. when uh, I bought the practice from dad and it was great. And started, you know, watching the, the cash flow and the trends and called uh, my good friend, Mick Kling and said, it, it, help, help me out here. Give me some, give me some advice. And he laughed and he said, you know, as a, as a new owner, um, you've got good days and bad days. And then eventually that turns into good weeks and bad weeks, good months and bad months, good quarters and bad quarters, good years. And then, and you know, it just extends out. So it's, uh, it's kind of fun watching, you know, 
and hearing you taking that that practice and turning it around and then seeing seeing the yeah. upward trend. Well, now, have you read the the twelve week year? No, is it good? I just started it. It is. I think it's going to be pretty good. Cool. I, I, it came pretty heavily recommended, and it's basically the whole gist of it. I'm on like the third chapter. Okay, is basically every business their most productive quarter is the end of their fiscal year. Mm-hmm. Fiscal year. Your fiscal year could end in June and you will crush it in June. And so the whole thing is like, if you set these nice high hopes for the whole year, and let's say you have a really bad first quarter and you're chasing this unattainable goal now for the rest of the year, you're going to underperform. But if you reset that goal every 12 weeks, every quarter, now everybody's refreshed and they have new deadlines and you just really look at it as every week is a month. Yep. And so you just have 12 months in a year, 12, 12 weeks in okay. a, a quarter essentially and look at it that way and go, okay, ah, crap, we missed it. Or, oh, we need to, all we need for this next week in order to hit our goal is yep. this. And their whole thing was like a month was kind of too short. A year was definitely too long. And this seemed like a, a good amount of time to pause and reflect and like keep people motivated throughout the time. So, oh, I like that. I'll have to read it. 